My uh, primary area of research is uh, stars and what stars are made out of. And so I study them using mainly a technique called spectroscopy. Light from the star that comes into the telescope and then goes into what's called a spectrograph, which basically is a prism or a, an optical element called a grating that breaks the light up into its rainbow of colors. And then by looking at that, looking at, you know, which colors are brighter, which colors are darker, we can figure out things like what the star is made of, how fast it's moving towards us or away from us, what the conditions are in the atmosphere on the star, and, and all kinds of other information like that. My main area of research then, my main area of interest, are stars that are much more massive than the sun, so very massive stars. When I postdoc at the University of Minnesota, I was on a project at the Hubble Space Telescope to study a star called Eta Carina, which is one of the largest stars in our galaxy. It's, uh, right now, it's probably around 100 times the mass of our own sun, which makes it very large. It, it was much bigger at one point, actually. Um, in the 1850s, it underwent what's called its great eruption, where for a brief period of time, it was actually, uh, well, other than the sun, one of the brightest stars in the sky. Uh, unfortunately, it's only visible from the southern hemisphere here on Earth. Uh, so we use either the Hubble Space Telescope or the Gemini Telescope to study it. It has this unique kind of double lobe nebula coming off, off it that, that if you've seen the pictures, I mean the Hubble Space Telescope pictures are one of the most recognizable images out there is kind of dumbbell shaped nebula. And that was thrown off in the great eruption. That contains about a mass of material somewhere around 20 times the mass of our sun. Now the interesting thing is this star went through this huge huge event where it got really bright, it threw off a lot of mass, and yet it survived it. I mean, it was almost as much energy output as a supernova, and yet this star is still there. Usually when we have a supernova, most of the star is gone. <laughs> I mean, it's an explosion, it's gone. And so, uh, this is an interesting stage in the evolution of massive stars that we obviously fully, don't fully understand, because if we did, we could have predicted something like this, and yet, Ah, and actually we're starting to see in some of the brighter stars in other galaxies, we're starting to see similar behavior. So this might be some stage of stellar evolution that we don't really fully understand. The reason why I'm interested in, in very massive stars, and Eta Carina in particular, is because these stars are, well, they're the biggest. <laughs> and you can learn a lot by studying the extremes, you know. Uh, so, and, and because they're the biggest, they're a lot hotter, they have a lot, they generate a lot more pressure at their centers, they have instabilities that smaller stars don't have, and so there's physics involved that isn't as prominently featured in other stars. And so we're learning a lot about very high energy physics by studying these stars. It's just a fascination of the unknown, someplace we haven't been before. I mean, at heart, human beings are curious, we're explorers. and. I mean, to borrow from Star Trek space is the final frontier, right? <laughs>